Previously, you learned the bubble sorting algorithm, a repetitive process of checking the biggest element in an unsorted part of the array, and bubbles it up to the rightmost position until all elements are in ascending order. Today, you're going to learn another basic sorting algorithm, the selection sort. Same with bubble sort, it's only good when dealing with a small dataset. But when working with large datasets, you might consider using a different algorithm because it has a worse time complexity of O n squared or quadratic. So how does it work? In a nutshell, if you have a collection of items, this algorithm works by looking for the smallest element in the entire unsorted part of the array and then swaps it with the first element. Repeat the process and look for the smallest in the remaining unsorted elements and swaps it with the first element. Do this repeatedly until you reach the last element. Unlike with bubble sort, wherein you need to swap the biggest element each time the condition is met inside the loop to bubble it on top. Selection sort only holds the index of the smallest number in the remaining unsorted part of the array and then swaps it only after finishing each set of loop. Again, start with the next element and look for the smallest item in the remaining unsorted portion of the array and swap it again. Though it reduces the actual number of swaps, but the number of checks to determine the smallest element is still the same as with the bubble sort. So, to implement it in code, I'll create an unsorted array with 5 elements. Then, same as before, I'll display the array's initial content using the for each loop. I'll remove these brackets to save some space. I'm only doing this since I only have one statement inside this for each loop. Curly braces are mandatory if you have multiple statements inside. I'll display a message, press enter key to start the selection sort, then ask the user to press the enter key to continue. So to implement this algorithm, I need to use a nested loop. Same as with bubble sort, I'll use variable i for my outer loop and j for my inner loop. For the outer loop, I'll start with i is equal to 0, since I want to start with the first element, and I need to finish it with less than the array size minus 1. Again, why minus 1? It is because if you have 5 element array, you only need 4 swaps the most since it involves two cells to do the swapping. But before doing that, I need to find the smallest element first here. So to start comparing every element of the unsorted part of the array inside this inner loop, to find the smallest number, I'll create a variable index of smallest. This will hold the index of the first element of the unsorted array. We assume that initially, the index of the smallest element is the current value of i which points to the first element of the unsorted part of the array. This value will be replaced several times later during the comparison. But here's the thing now. For the inner loop, I will not initialize variable j to 0, but rather to the next index after the initially assumed smallest, and do the comparison until the last element of my array, checking it one by one. So. As the value of i increases, so as the starting value of j, thereby reducing the number of inner loops after every set of iteration. Now, inside this loop, I'll compare if the next element, array index j, is smaller than the current smallest element, array index of smallest, and if so, I'll get that index and assign it as the new index of smallest. After iterating through this inner loop, the index of smallest will now hold the index of the smallest element in the unsorted part of the array. Then, outside the inner loop, I'll perform the actual swapping of the smallest element pointed by this index of smallest variable, with the first element of the unsorted array pointed by variable i. But to do that, I'll use a temp variable and assign the value of this first element so it is not overwritten. And then, I'll store it to the previous location of the smallest element since the smallest is already placed in the first location. Again, just for illustration purposes, I'll add a for each loop to display the current content of the array as the sorting process happens. And put a read line before performing the next set of iteration. Lastly, I'll use the same code to display the final sorted array. Let's check the output. Here's the array's initial content, and when I press the Enter key, you'll see that 2, being the smallest, is now positioned at index 0. 
swapping its position with element 5. For the second set, 4 is positioned at index 1, swapping its position with element 14. For the third set, 5 is positioned at index 2, swapping its position with element 10. And finally, 10 remains as is, and no swapping occurred. Thus, the final sorted array is displayed. So, let's go back to our code and try adding elements to our array, and check if it still works. I'll add 75, 1, and 56. Let's run the program. As you can see, 1 being the smallest is now positioned at index 0, swapping its position with element 5. Then, 2 positioned at index 1, swapping with element 14. Then 4 at index 2, swapping with element 10. Then 5 at index 3, swapping with element 14. 10 remains as is since no other remaining element is smaller than 10. Then 14 at index 5, swapping with element 75. Lastly, 56 at index 6, swapping with 75. And the final sorted array is displayed using the selection sorting algorithm. And now, it is your time to code. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please don't hesitate to subscribe for more.